high temperatures, but slow warm-up, structural complexity, and poor unification, ubiquitous fittings, unfortunately, the engines of this period have many weak points. After restyling, a relatively simple 1.6-liter aspirated appeared, and the rest were modernized or replaced with analogs from new generations, but the complexity of the design has not gone away. And in the spherical expansion tank there is a Koschief needle, a bag of silica gel, which collapses at 5 to 8 years of service. Before restyling, there are mainly 1.2 TSI and 1.8 TSI, a little later the 1.4 TSI engine joined them. 1.2 TSI engine with 105 horsepower with the code CBZB refers to the EA111 line. It is unique in its way because it is the only engine with an 8-valve cylinder head and direct injection. The engine uses cast iron sleeves, a timing chain drive, and a turbocharger with a liquid intercooler. From the beginning of the release, the main problem was just the timing. It has a unique chain that was used only on this motor, and at first its resource was extremely small, already with runs of 30 to 50,000 kilometers, slips occurred. The new timing mechanism on production engines since the end of 2011 is quite viable. The chain was finalized here, and everything was replaced, including the star on the crankshaft, which is part of it, that is, the crankshaft is also different here. The tensioner was also changed, strengthening the ratchet. As a result, the timing resource on engines after modernization is 150 to 180,000. At the transitional 1.2, the chain was modernized, but its resource is less than that of the new drive, and does not exceed 120,000, and slips on the lower star still occur when loosened. Piston is initially successful, even with problems with the intercooler, it holds up well. The intercooler suffers from infrequent antifreeze and oil changes, as well as dirty filters and radiators. Sometimes the pump suddenly dies, which also guarantees problems with detonation and turbine overload. In the early years, the control valve damper drive on the turbine often failed, and purely in the electrical part. As a result, the turbine was changed entirely. Now the motor drive is available even on the popular Chinese online flea market. Cracks in the hot part of the turbine and acidification of the control valve drive rod appeared later. All this is also solved without replacing the entire node, but this is not cheap. Sometimes it's easier to buy a used hot part of the turbine. Motor 1.4 with a power of 122 horsepower, Caxa, often found on Skoda of that period. It is also of the EA111 family, with direct injection, but 16 valve, with a different cylinder head. Here, too, an imperfect timing, but it is easier to treat, by upgrading only the node itself. And there is almost no ultra-low resource, and after a relatively inexpensive replacement of the front cover, tensioner, stars, and chain, it can exceed 150,000 kilometers. For the intercooler and turbine, there are about the same questions as 1.2. However, the 1.4 TSI piston group does not have a large margin of safety, like the younger engine. And the good work of all elements of the power system has a stronger effect on the resource of the CPG. Detonation for this piston group is much worse and can lead to damage to the pistons. In addition, intake valves become heavily contaminated after 80,000 mileage, causing a drop in power and the risk of scuffing due to coke getting under the rings or the valves themselves. Yes, and mass loser due to lying rings occurs with runs over 100. In general, this is a good motor, especially since very early versions were not installed on Yeti. It requires a little more attention than 1.2, but its return is noticeably higher. But the 152 horsepower 1.8 TSI CDAB was installed on the car before the end of production. It belongs to the EA888 Gen 2 series and has been greatly updated over the years. The first releases have a huge number of flaws, starting with the unsuccessful piston group and timing and ending with balance shafts and pumps. Read our article about these wonderful motors. After 2013, the engines received many updates, in particular, new crankshafts, a piston group, gas distribution and crankcase ventilation, VCG, new pumps and fuel equipment. 
Unfortunately, this did not solve the problems with the timing completely. In addition, not very successful balance shafts were preserved and continued to cause trouble for the VKG and timing. The piston group as a whole has been brought to mind, but excesses happen to it as a rule, with overheating and problems with the VCG. It is better not to buy a car with this early production motor, unless you are ready to spend money on serious repairs or overhauls of the motor, or are not sure that these works have been done before you. And there are two big temptations when buying such a car. First of all, this is a four-wheel drive and the possibility of tuning up to 250 to 280 forces for relatively small amounts. With such a motor, Yeti turns into an inexpensive lighter, all that remains is to lower the suspension. But the costs will match the new status. In 2014, motors of the EA211 family appeared on the model in an aluminum block with cast iron sleeves and a timing belt. These are atmospheric CWVA with 1.6 liters and 115 horsepower and 1.4 CZCA slash CZDA turbo engines with 125 horsepower and rare European 1.2 CYVB and 1.0 CHZD. A characteristic sign of almost all motors is a small oil burner during the break-in period. After 100 to 120,000 pump leaks are possible, this is usually treated with a new set of gaskets. The timing replacement schedule is overly optimistic after 90,000 there are chances of a break. It is better not to delay the replacement, since it is inexpensive. On supercharged engines, the hot part of the turbine cracks and the stem of the control valve drive is very likely to acidify. Basically, up to 200,000 motors pass with a minimum oil appetite, even if the dealer oil is replaced every 15,000. Other specimens manage to run more than 400,000, and there are usually no problems with piston and cylinder head wear. It is a pity that from the factory engines were installed only on front-wheel drive cars. In addition, for this generation of 1.4 engines, a power of 150 forces is completely adequate and does not affect the resource, but only the requirements for the quality of service increase. Yeti with such motors is a very good choice, they are already quite powerful, but economical and reliable. There are very few diesel Yeti in Russia, they were not officially delivered. There are options both with 2 liter engines of the EA189 family, and with newer EA288 on cars from 2016. An extremely small number of diesel units does not allow us to compile statistics on failures and operating features, but based on operating experience on other models of the Volkswagen concern, it can be argued that there are no particular problems with them. The brakes on the Yeti are not particularly troublesome. ABS is quite successful, breakdowns are rare and are primarily related to the wiring to the sensors. Popular malfunctions are associated with the wedging of the handbrake mechanism in the rear caliper, it is screw here. Basically, questions appear for cars with a 1.8 liter engine, they have an aluminum caliper. The front calipers on all versions hold up well, only the oldest specimens have worn anters and guides. The only pity is that for the version with a 1.2 engine, the size of the discs was cut to a minimum. 280 millimeters for a car weighing under 1,400 kilograms is very small. Hence a small resource, and in the mountains it is not difficult to overheat the brakes. In this regard, the choice of pads becomes an extremely responsible matter. But even for cars with more powerful 1.4 and 1.8 engines, discs with a diameter of 288 and 312 millimeters are also not outstanding, and many owners are refining the brakes. Fortunately, platform machines have a huge choice. There are no global issues with the suspension. In the front, with runs up to 100, a careful driver will only need to replace the anti-roll bar. The traditional sore point of cars on the PQ46 platform, the rear silent block of the front lever, on Skoda serves more than usual. You can put even very inexpensive substitutes, and they will still serve well. The first problems usually arise when the mileage is under 100,000. Unfortunately, the rear suspension starts to tap after 60 to 70,000, even with careful operation. Wheel bearings are no problem. 
sometimes the springs in the rear suspension brake, and even then on the cars of the first releases. All in all, the Yeti with original wheels and suspension with the rough road package is a surprisingly good option for anyone who regularly rides on rough roads. The steering on the Yeti is with a third generation electric rail. It can be made by ZF, Bosch, or Volkswagen, but everyone has the same problems. On machines with a 1.8 engine, after 120 to 150,000, tapping is observed, and when opening the rail, you can often see surface corrosion of the rod even with intact anthers. It usually does not reach a serious repair if a preventive one is carried out in time. Major breakdowns occur when anthers are depressurized or electronics fail due to problems with wiring or a torque sensor. The resource of tips and rods is good, usually more than 70,000 kilometers. Drives do not require attention. Internal CV joints traditionally do not change separately. It is worth noting only the corrosion of the splines of the angular coupling in all-wheel drive versions, and even that is rare. Manual boxes mean the presence of a dual-mass flywheel with an unpredictable resource. If desired, you can supply a custom one and install clutches from old VR6 motors in the future. The decision is justified. Custom at a price will cost about the same as the original flywheel, and now even cheaper. Occasionally there are complaints about the welded satellites of the differential and the wear of the synchronizers, with time the selectivity of the switching mechanism worsens. There are three options for automated boxes. With 1.2 and 1.4 TSI engines, as well as a 1.6 TDI diesel engine, a 7-speed DSG DQ200 robot was installed, a 6-speed DQ250 is combined with 1.8 TSI and 2.0 diesel engines. Well, the third and most desirable is the usual Eisen TF60SC hydromechanical machine complete with 1.6 atmospheric engines. Why was Yeti treated so wary at first? The fact is that at the start of sales, only TSI turbo engines and only DSG boxes were offered, and in 2010 this combination already had a bad reputation. The 7-speed DQ200 at that time was known as just a set of horror stories. Constant problems with mechatronics, and some of them are due to engineering flaws, and some are due to software. Not surprisingly, owners of cars with such DSGs filed claims and eventually received a five-year warranty, including boxes. In general, the DSG turned out to be so ambiguous that our separate material is even devoted to it. After 2013, cars received automatic transmission updates, forks and mechatronics of a new model, and along with the new box management software. So in operation, they do not differ from newer copies. Today, this is a fairly successful version of the transmission, which, however, requires compliance with the rules of handling and understanding of the processes occurring in the box. For example, by analogy with mechanics, it is necessary to protect the clutch and not stand for a long time with the brake pedal in the floor, it is better to turn on neutral. Do not take off with the pedal in the floor. If you follow the rules, then the box will not bring surprises. The resource of clutches during normal operation is from 120,000 kilometers and sometimes reaches 200 or more. The resource of a dual mass flywheel is less, it rarely withstands more than 150,000. In the rest of the mechanical part, everything is quite reliable, except that overloaded bearings and a not very successful differential can fail, but with 1.4 motors this kind of problem does not happen until runs of more than 250,000. In general, the DQ200 is now a good box with almost perfect diagnosability. The DQ250 transmission used with 1.8 TSI engines is initially more reliable, but due to the complexity of the design, the price of repairs may be higher. The use of a common oil bath for clutches and mechatronics generates wear on the solenoids, even despite the presence of double oil filtration. However, the DQ250 is more tolerant of careless handling and with frequent oil changes, temperature control and timely repair of the dual mass flywheel is almost eternal. Diagnosing the box is also easy. Checking fork travel and full data on clutch and gearbox operating temperatures are a great help when choosing a machine. 
Problems with the input shaft bearings arise mainly when you ignore the knocks of a dead flywheel and torque overload in the case of engine tuning. What can I say about the real machine? We have already written about this box and talked about what, in principle, breaks down in it. In the case of Yeti, everything is not so scary. With a 1.6 engine, the automatic is very reliable, and its main weak point is the temperature and cooling system. Constant overheating in combination with rare oil changes leads to damage to the valve body and seals in its mechanical part. But even with this, it is difficult to kill the box simply due to the safety margin of the structure. Of course, care should not be forgotten. At a minimum, regularly checking the oil for cleanliness and monitoring the temperature should become a habit. When buying, you need to drive the box both cold and hot. Computer diagnostics in this case is very limited in capabilities, but it should not be neglected. When choosing a Yeti with a 1.6 engine and an automatic, you need to keep in mind that the dynamics will be much worse than cars with 1.2 and DSG. If this is not important for you, then the classic automatic transmission is a great option. Four-wheel drive is only for the top versions of Yeti with 1.8 engines. The drive through the Haldux coupling has two weak points. Insufficient oil filtration and a very small filling volume, which causes the oil to become intensively contaminated, especially if you constantly use all-wheel drive. The angle coupling is quite reliable, but boosting the 1.8 engine is easy and simple, and the units are not designed for increased loads. On older cars, the oil level in the bevel gear sometimes drops and the intermediate shaft splines suffer. However, these are rather exceptions. Volkswagen cars of the early 2010s have a number of paint problems, and Yeti has been affected to the fullest. Closer to 2012 to 2013, the painting technology was finalized, and the problems became much less, but they did not completely disappear. Not passivated galvanizing of body panels leads to the fact that the paintwork peels off over a large area around the site of the initial source of paint damage. And if the cavity under the paint is not opened, for example, under a layer of anti-gravity or in places where a plastic panel or rubber seal fits, then the metal in this place quickly rots to holes. Pre-styling copies of Yeti are prone to corrosion of external panels. With poor care, they rot a lot. There are a lot of neglected specimens in the population, and often we are not even talking about swelling of the paint, but about frank holes on the outer elements. You can't buy old Yeti without looking, counting on the all-powerful galvanization. A full inspection is needed with a measurement of the thickness of the paintwork and a thorough check of all weak points. And there are enough of them, even in the most visible place, on the edge of the hood, where the grill overlay is attached, rust can come out. The joint between the hood panel and the decorative trim is just the perfect place for corrosion. The roof edge, wheel arches, front mudguards, the area under the rails, the edges and corners of the doors with rolling, the recesses of the door handles, the license plate niche on the rear door, and just the side surfaces of the lower body, chips and corrosion are very likely everywhere. Particular attention should be paid to the seals and the places of their contact with the metal of the body, the junction of the front and rear doors, the upper part of the openings, especially above the rear door. The rear door and arch seal seems to attract rust, and the outer edge of the rear door is often chipped, despite the presence of a protective film there. Look at the rear fenders under the lights too, these aren't the most obvious places to check, but Skoda knows how to surprise. Even if corrosion bubbles are not visible from the outside during a cursory examination, then in such places there are chances to find it. The condition of the machine underneath and in hidden areas greatly depends on the quality of maintenance. Read, from how thoroughly all panel joints were washed as a preventive measure and the anti-corrosion protection was updated. The bottom and floor panels, although not covered with plastic underneath, are well treated with anti-gravel and with good ventilation and drainage, so there may be almost no serious corrosion even on externally problematic specimens. If the sills were not damaged in an accident, the car was not driven into the mud, and